I was telling you guys a little while ago, turns out Wyoming now has a bill that would involve the minimum wage, but also South Dakota does as well. In fact, 30 states now have in front of them bills that would raise the minimum wage. Well, a good test experiment would be something that's happening in a place called SeaTac and surrounding areas. And for that, we head over to the Western Watchdogs and on video stream with us right now is Shelby Stevens. Oh, you got your logo up. That looks pretty good. Excellent. Glad yeah. it worked. <laughs> It looks pretty cool, like you're on a real television station out there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay, Shelby, you've been covering this story, and I've been relying on your uh, news reports for a while and watching them closely because since you're there, you've actually given me some heads up where some of the major media either jumped the gun or may, maybe have gotten the detail wrong, which is why I'm, I'm calling you back on to update us. Two articles were just written by you and one of your partners that I've had on my website for the past couple of days. Could you explain to me, let's do this in order, the first article sure. that you two wrote? Sure. Um, the first one that we wrote was about um, some legislation that's coming up in Washington State, um, and it's spearheaded by um, some members of the Republican Party that would basically prohibit um, towns from um, creating their own minimum wage laws. So it would, as you know, CTAC just CTAC voters just approved $15 an hour minimum wage, and Seattle has been talking about, um, you know, passing their own ordinance for $15 an hour minimum wage. So this law would, um, if it became law, would prevent towns from being able to do that and would put the conversation back to the state legislature. Okay, and we've had several other fights like that. Like I'm in the state of Wyoming, as you know. And one of them had to do with, well, it, it could be with smoking bans, gun laws, for example. Uh, cities cannot pass their own gun ordinances. The state is supposed to have the final say on what those ordinances are going to be. So it doesn't sound like anything different to say that the state should have ultimate authority here. So does that change if they pass this, what just happened in SeaTac? I believe the bill in its original format would reverse what happened in SeaTac. Uh, it would be interesting to see, you know, as things go through the legislative process, usually they're amended and there might be some challenges to that, but that was our reading of it, um, as, it as it was originally. Okay. Now, let's get back to Let's go real quick, and I've got a few more questions on this. Uh, well, back to SeaTac, but let's take mm -hmm. a look at the second article that you two wrote. What was that about? So we just took a look specifically at the um, Seattle, the push for the Seattle minimum wage proposal and just uh, laid out a few, you know, potential problems with that. One of them being, um, you mentioned SeaTac. Um, I spoke with Max Nelson of the Freedom Foundation and unfortunately haven't been able to get any businesses really on record yet, but he said that he's talked to some folks who are restructuring um, to be able to avoid paying that minimum wage. So you're already sort of seeing some ripple effects from that, even though um, the other issue with that is that half of the, or more than half of the people that it was supposed to impact are being held under that law because judge recently ruled um, that uh, the city didn't have the authority to put that uh, wage ordinance on them, uh, but instead um, the port commission is going to be deciding that. So that was one of them. Um, the other was it's supposed to cost the city of Seattle about a million dollars a year to pay its employees um, that $15 an hour minimum wage. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and a couple others, uh, I have to look back here real quick if I can. Well, okay, Let, let's go Sorry. back real quick. Well, yeah. when, I, when I think about w w what you've been telling me has been happening in SeaTac, and for those, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, the, the way you've explained it to me, I understand it that SeaTac was sort of a, a city that was incorporated around the airport. So right. is it right that what the court said is they're not allowed to raise the minimum wage for the airport, but as far as surrounding property, they can raise the minimum wage for that. Is that correct? That's exactly right. Yep, they okay. determined that I guess because of um, the port, uh, uh, the port authority's jurisdiction is over the airport, so they the court decided that they didn't have jurisdiction over that. Okay, so does this go into effect soon, or are they already starting to? Well, it's, it's sort of yeah, it's sort of up in the air right now. I mean, it's in effect for um, the portion of the businesses that are outside of the airport, but for the rest of them that are inside of the airport, it's not taking effect yet. The port authorities tell me that they are in the process of planning some roundtables and public discussions on possibly enforcing it themselves. Um, so uh, it remains to be seen if it's going to impact the rest of those. Okay. Now, the sources, the people that you know there, have they been mm -hmm. saying that let any of these businesses, because my theory is <laughs> that a lot of these businesses would just pack up and move across the city line 
and do business just outside of the airport. Have, have any of your sources been telling you they might do something like that? Um, I haven't heard of anybody packing up and leaving. Um, I know I, I know Scott Ostrander, he was in the news, their Cedar Brook Lodge, they actually expanded, but they had plans beforehand to expand um, and are hoping that that will sort of offset the cost. Um, but yeah, I haven't heard of anybody actually. I'm sure it's difficult, you know, to just pack your business up and, and move across city lines. So I, I don't know if they'll be doing that or they'll be doing more of the restructuring of, you know, the amount of staff and hours and things to be able to try and get, you know, find a way around the law that could be possible. Okay, well, I, th I think it'll be interesting if you can find out because here in the state of Wyoming, believe it or not, our minimum wage is like five something an hour. But the reason that doesn't bother anybody in the state of Wyoming is because no one really gets paid that here. This state, actually, people get paid pretty well, so to raise the minimum wage wouldn't really mean anything unless you raise it up to $10 an hour because most people are getting paid 12 or more. Mm -hmm. So how do you have any idea what percentage of people in that SeaTac area actually get paid the minimum wage? Um, that's a really good question. I'm not sure. I know that, you know, from the proponent side of it, they talked a lot about, um, you know, baggage handlers and um, kiosk workers that were getting paid under that. But I do know that Washington State has one of the highest uh, minimum wage right now. It's at, I think, 9.32 an hour. Um, and the state's actually, that's another piece of legislation, the state's considering upping it to $12 an hour over a three-year period. Um, so I'm not, I don't have a statistic on hand. I'm sorry, we're, yeah. we're waiting for the other shoe to drop to find out if any of these companies actually do raise it to $15 an hour and then what happens after that. Right, yeah, they, a lot will, you know, tell over time to see what really happens, yeah. Okay, well, as you get that information, because I'm waiting breathlessly, this, I mean, to me, this is a great experiment. We keep right. having an argument with people, so now we actually get to find out. The problem is, it seems to me like they're almost afraid to do it or there's a fight. Any and chance that this might be repealed by the city? Um, in CTEC? Yeah. Um, I don't know about that. I, and the, I think the problem right now is that it's impacting such a small number. I think it's just over a thousand that are businesses that are outside of the airport. So, um, like you mentioned, it would be a great sort of experiment area, but you have so few, you know, businesses that are actually right now being impacted that it's sort of just in that holding pattern. I know originally the opponents um, were planning on it and filing. Um, a lawsuit, and I think that the airport and the restaurant association did that, and you see that the results of that with um, the judges ruling on um, the port authority having the jurisdiction over that. So, sort of a a weird kind of um, outcome. <laughs> it's been sort of back and forth. It was so close too with the vote too, and then now it's sort of all up in the air again. Shelby uh, Stevens has joined us, reporting from Northwestern Watchdogs. Where is your office at, by the way? Um, out of the Portland uh, metro area. Um, well, as the story develops, uh, keep in touch with me, and we'll have you back on yeah. so we can find out exactly what happens with this whole, I'm going to call it a mess. You know? I mean, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> a reporter, I'm calling it a mess, okay? Good, right. to again, Shelley. Good to see you. Thank you.